Hello and welcome back to Mr. Warhead's 5 Minutes On. Today I'm going to be talking about limited companies. This is really going to be aimed at an A-level sort of standard of understanding. Uh, if you're a GCSE student, you will be able to get some things from this, but you might want to have a think about other videos which I've got on the channel which should help you out. So let's get started with limited companies then. So limited companies, well these are businesses that have separate legal identities to their owners. So in previous videos we talked about sole traders being same legal identity. The owner of a sole trader is the same as the business and therefore the debts of the business, the liabilities of those business are owned by that, that owner. Well, limited companies breaks that and it says that the owner and the company are two different legal identities and therefore the owner can only lose the money that they invest in the business because any debt the business creates is the businesses, it's not the owners. And we'll go into that later. So there's some real key features of limited companies. One of the key features is capital is raised by selling shares or little parts of the business. They sell off little parts of the business and that raises capital, generates capital, often used for growth. Limited companies have a board of directors, therefore, they don't have um, owners running it necessarily. The owner might be on the board of directors and that sort of muddies the waters a little bit but they have a board of directors that's appointed by the owners and they run the business on behalf of those shareholders. Limited companies also pay corporation tax. They don't pay income tax like a sole trader or a partnership does on its profits. It pays corporation tax on its profits. Owners have limited liability and that's what I was talking about earlier where we have that paradigm of breaking the, the ownership away from, from the, the owner and the business, then the two different legal identities. It means that I'm free to invest in organizations with less risk. And if we think about that, if I'm a venture capitalist or I work in the stock market and I want to invest in a business, I'm very unlikely to invest in a business if I'm liable for its debts. That makes sense. I'm not going to do that. The risk has to be limited somewhere for me. And it's limited into the amount that I can put into the business, invest into the business. So if I invest a million pounds and buy a million pounds worth of shares and the business fails, I lose my million pounds. But I don't lose any extra that, that might be on top of that million that business has incurred, the debts that business has incurred. That's limited liability. Now, forming a limited company, you need two legal documents, either the Memorandum of Association and the Articles of Association essentially lays out what that limited company is going to look like. Once that's been met, then Companies House will issue you a certificate of incorporation. Okay, and there's two main types of limited companies. So the first one, private limited companies. And these are small to medium enterprises. These are your sole traders and partnerships that have grown to a level where the risk associated with that business is quite high. And as a result, it makes a sensible decision for that business to move to become a limited company, a private limited company. Now, all these businesses will have limited company at the end of their name or they will have LTD at the end of their name. Now, the benefits of becoming a limited private limited company obviously are limited liability that's a massive massive weight off owner's shoulders and it takes that off more than that i can go to shareholders and i can get capital capital is really important for growth i need money to be able to make money it's an oxymoron if you like i have to spend money to make money uh, and i need that capital to fuel growth control in a private limited company is not lost from the owner because that control stays with them because often they are the the board of directors they choose who they're selling shares to often it's to friends and family and so they trust these individuals and therefore they don't lose control if a shareholder wants to sell their shares as well in a private limited company well they have to be agreed by all shareholders so again i have more say on who can buy shares and who can't well the drawbacks of this i have to publish my financial records. I have to publish the records uh, that I create and that can be used by my competition um, to get insider knowledge. I split my profits based on that share issue, based on how much I get. I have to pay a dividend per share and that profit will be split to those shareholders. It costs to set up. It's not a vast cost, but it does cost money to set up. Um, share transfer can take time because it has to be agreed and it has to be sort of go through the legal processes to, to generate that share change. When businesses get very large then, often they choose to become a PLC, a public limited company. Now take note here, often lots of people will say, well, public limited companies, it must be in the public sector, it must be owned by the government. It's not true. It's in the private sector, it's called a public limited company because 
anybody can buy shares the public can buy shares in that organization okay now it's similar to an ltd it's similar to a private limited company in that it has a board of directors who run the company on behalf of the shareholders they're elected every year at the agm the annual general meeting uh, which all shareholders were inv invited to now the difference is as i said shares are publicly traded I have no control over who buys those shares. They're publicly traded by the stock market. Um, it decides to make an initial offering. So this business, when it's going to become a PLC, makes an initial offering, sells those on the uh, stock market, often for vast sums of money. And then those are owned by private individuals. So I could buy some shares in McDonald's, for example, and then my shares. If I choose to sell them, I get the profits of that, not McDonald's. McDonald's don't get any more money after that initial offering. Um, so they have to make that initial offering and then I'm the one, the private individual buys those shares who makes a profit on those shares. Now there's some key advantages of being a, pro a public limited company. As I said, the capital generated from these is ridiculous. If we look at Alibaba in 2014, $20 billion is an estimate of how much they generated from their initial offering. That's a vast sum of money that can be used to make that business bigger, stronger, better, all those things. These businesses are often large organizations and then therefore where they can gain economies of scale, they can gain unit cost benefits, um, and this reduces the cost of their production and they can dominate markets. They're massive. Once they've got that capital, you can use that to dominate markets. We've seen that with Amazon and with, with all these, you know, Facebook and Twitter and those sort of things, and they've dominated those markets. Now the disadvantages, it's expensive to set up, often run into millions of pounds. There's lots of legal frameworks around this. Because anybody can buy shares, you can run the risk of hostile takeover. Nothing stops another organization going around and buying all the shares off those private individuals and then owning more of your business than you actually do. This happened to Cadbury's with Kraft in about 2011. They went around and they bought up the shares from private individuals. Kraft now owned Cadbury's. Again, you have to public, publish your financial accounts. That's going to potentially lead to kind of competitors getting an inside track on you and look at where you're doing and then enable them to benchmark against you if you're better than them. Finally, we have this concept of divorce of ownership and control, and arguably it's the biggest disadvantage for being a PLC. Divorce of ownership and control means the owners and the person control it are different people because often shareholders in PRCs are just private individuals they're equity firms they're not running that organization they appoint somebody to do that they appoint a board of directors essentially highly skilled managers to manage that organization for them well that is a divorce of ownership and control so therefore do those two parties do the shareholders and do the managers have the same interest and the same aim now the argument is yes Managers do. Managers want profits for the organization. Shareholders want profits for the organization. Those two things align. And often that's true. And it's been made more true because managers now are often made shareholders through their salary. So what often happens is part of their payment will be in share issue. And that enables them to have that incentive to make as much profit as they possibly can to raise that share price. However, there is often a divorce of ownership and control. The managers might not act in the, the way in which the shareholders feel they want it to happen. And as a result, then there's a break of that paradigm. These two people might not necessarily agree on things. And often we might see behavior like profit satisficing happening where the managers make profit, but they don't make maximum profit, they don't maximize profit, they make enough profit to satisfy the shareholders. It's a divorce of ownership and control, and as a result, it can muddy the waters. And often we see people get ousted from organizations, and often shareholders you know go and revolt against management because of different decisions they're making, and then the complexity of managing that situation is quite high. There's a lot of information in this video, and I'm sorry it's gone over, but obviously it's quite a big topic, it's quite an important topic, and there's lots to talk about. Uh, if you like the video, please do so, and please subscribe to the channel. Thanks.